Welcome to episode six of the Diamond R Garage. This starts off what we like to call our 202 series, where we look at advanced terminology and technologies in car audio. Today, we're gonna to answer the question, what is dynamic power? Well, to answer this question, we'll discuss what it is and what it means in the real world. Now, this will give you more information on amplifier power ratings to help you choose the right one for your audio system. It's important to know that dynamic power output, when measured properly, can tell you the limits of the amplifier and help you understand how it affects speaker and subwoofer reliability. Now, we've been publishing dynamic power ratings for years. For example, if the car you drive has a 300 horsepower rating, does that mean that everywhere you drive, the engine is always producing 300 horsepower? Well, no. We realize this is the highest amount of horsepower the car can produce in a controlled environment. Amplifiers are the same thing. You may see 500 watts on an amplifier box, but does that mean the amplifier always produces 500 watts all the time? Of course not. That's why we use dynamic power in conjunction with continuous power ratings. This gives you the highest accurate power number under controlled conditions. Let's start off with the first rating, which is continuous power. Continuous power is what the amplifier produces on a test bench using sine waves. We like to test for three things. Frequency range, which is the range of music we hear from low notes to high notes. The amount of noise, which is the noise that the electronics generate inside the amplifier circuit. And the speaker load, which helps us measure the output power of the amplifier to the speaker system. Starting with frequency range, there are two common methods used a one kilohertz tone, or a full range 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz signal. Now typically, the one kilohertz method produces the most amount of power because it's the easiest signal for the amplifier to reproduce. But this doesn't give you an accurate representation of the amplifier's full capability. On the other hand, a full range audio signal that's driven into all amplifier channels is better because it illustrates the amplifier's capability at all audible frequencies. Now this measurement is taken at a specific voltage, typically 14.4 volts, which is an industry standard. The second is the amount of noise generated by the electronic circuit of the amplifier. This is the amount of noise acceptable while measuring amplifier power output. The power measurement is taken when the amount of total harmonic distortion plus noise is less than 1% of the total output. Last is the speaker load. This is the effective resistance of the speaker system that's connected to the outputs of the amplifier. This power measurement is typically done at various loads, such as 4, 2, or 1 ohm. To sum this up, continuous power ratings are what technicians use to measure amplifier output on a test bench. You can find this on the amplifier specifications page and on the back of the box, and we'll read something like 50 watts times 4 channels at 4 ohms at 14.4 volts with less than 1% THD plus noise. Dynamic power is the real world power output that the amplifier produces in your car when playing music. Dynamic power uses these three criteria. Frequency, which is the tone we can hear that's generated. Signal burst, it's the instantaneous pulse of the tone. And the reactive load. This is the speaker load while it's actively moving. The frequency used to measure dynamic power is one kilohertz. Now audio engineers have chosen this as the baseline because traditional music is impossible to accurately replicate. The frequency of one kilohertz was chosen because it has the most amount of musical energy in a typical song. The next criteria is signal burst. Music is dynamic and sound waves are complex. Therefore, they're constantly changing. To simulate this, a one kilohertz signal is used with 1% noise in burst mode. This means that the signal is turned on for a period and then turned off for a specified rest period. Now the process is very important for the integrity of the number generated. The last criteria is the reactive load. Speakers are complex and this test is done to see if the amplifier can properly handle driving a speaker without damaging the amp. This is done by connecting a resistive, inductive, and capacitive load to the speaker outputs of the amplifier. Now this replicates how a real world speaker is driven. Test equipment like the PowerCube test against all three of these factors. 
As you can see, there are many variables when testing amplifiers, some that create inflated numbers that are not realistic, and some that represent real-world amplifier performance. On Rockford Fosgate amplifiers, you'll see we publish both numbers on the Performance Verification Certificate, or the birth sheet. You'll see the continuous power and the dynamic power rating. Both conform to the CTA 2006 standard. This gives you a better understanding of the amplifier's full capability and how it powers your system. All right, I know we got technical in this episode, but hopefully this will help you understand what dynamic and continuous power are and how the ratings work together when selecting an amplifier. If you have additional questions, feel free to talk with your authorized dealer. They're always happy to help you find the best solutions for your system. Or check out our website at rockfordfosgate.com for available amplifier models and more information on system design. Hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos like this one. And we'll see you in the next episode.